What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Would Hogwarts Legacy go through review bombing after its release? The answer to that is actually quite subjective. I think there will be some level of, in quote, review bombing going on, but at the same time, I think fans are already in a position where they understand that this might be coming and will be very well prepared to block all this stuff out and move on to enjoy the game that they've been looking forward to for many years. A few other things that are noteworthy is also this past year in terms of game releases, it really did showcase a lot more how reviews, depending on the sources or whichever source it may be, are very subjective. They're opinions of everybody and everybody's got opinions. So at the end of the day, you would have to form your opinion from the game itself. Now, I could end the video here and we would have already covered everything in a general sense, but it's not that simple. So let's go a little bit further into this conversation and let's talk about the reviewing process and possibly what we may eventually get to see at the time this game is released. Right now, there are controversies surrounding Hogwarts Legacy. There are elements within the internet that are not happy that this game is even in existence. In fact, much worse is that they're not happy that the game is actually doing well. So for the most part, they're taking out their anger, they're taking out maybe their disappointment or whatever it is on people who are looking forward to playing the game. You can be certain that a lot of these elements are going to make their way into the review ecosystems and put their own opinions in those particular ecosystems to maybe poison the well. And this is where I say maybe a lot of Hogwarts Legacy fans, if you're probably maybe waiting for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One version, you might want to try your best. That's the PS4, Xbox One version that's coming later to probably stay clear of these reviews for the time being. And even those playing on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X who are already dialed into the game, maybe you pre-ordered, it might serve you better to just probably maintain a little bit of that discipline and just say, you know what, I'm going to play the game for myself before going on to see what any other reviewer actually says about the game. Gotham Knights comes to mind. I covered Gotham Knights. I played the game before watching any reviews and I enjoyed the game extensively. And then on watching the reviews, I was quite shocked that my experience compared to the reviewer's experience were like night and day. And then I looked at the other reviews written by other players who had been enjoying the game and realized that their experience and the reviewer's experience were like night and day. Example being, Steam has about a 71% positive rating for Gotham Knights, but you'll never believe it if you actually watch the reviews that are on the internet. Callisto Protocol has about a 60-something percent, so does Modern Warfare. These games are ranked way worse than Gotham Knights in terms of people who have actually played the game on Steam, but when you actually click the internet reviews, you would never believe that players actually did enjoy the game more than people who didn't enjoy the game when everybody played it. Now, this is a different game, a different set of circumstances, but Gotham Knights was polarizing because it wasn't necessarily going to follow the Arkham universe, so that already created a controversy in itself. Seeing a game like Hogwarts Legacy being surrounded by controversy, I can already start to see that the review sequence and the review ecosystem is going to be quite weird, and this is why I'm making this video. I also remember that when Skillup was doing the Scalisto Protocol review, he prefaced it with a clip from Gotham Knights and a statement saying, hey guys, you know, reviews are just opinions of individuals. He had to concede after enjoying the authoritative process of making his opinions on games known and many people taking it for gospel for the most part, that reviews are subjective opinions. So when you see that maybe some reviewer may not like Hogwarts Legacy and you do, do not be surprised. At the end of the day, it's all subjective for the most part. So in doing due diligence, I think the best way to approach all of this is to basically engage with the video game for yourself, and then you can start to you know, digest what other people are saying for the most part. Now, here is where there is, in my opinion, a little bit of an interesting uh, you know, dynamic that's going to be going on. That is for those who are depending on reviews to make their buying decision. This is where I think there's going to be a very interesting dynamic overall, because at the end of the day, some of us here in the community who are content creators, we make it our job and our role to actually purchase these games, talk about them and kind of point to other people saying, hey, these are some things that I feel are flaws and you can make an informed decision as a consumer. So I know in the first part of this video, I probably sounded crazy saying, you know, you might want to kind of back away from the reviews and so on and so forth. But then at the same time, if you actually depend on the reviews, this is where it's actually going to be very interesting. So what I would say is maybe even limit the reviews that you're actually looking at 
to a very select number of reviewers so that you do not get caught up in their own preferences and their own likes and dislikes rather than actually going all out there for yourself and trying out the game. It's going to be a very interesting distinction because the game comes out in about a month from today, my recording of this video, and it's going to be really cool to see how everybody perceives the game. The final side of the conversation are going to be those who personally have a problem with the author of the game. Their own reviews and their own opinions are actually going to be thrown into the mix. And we might be seeing some of those particular sentiments get highlighted even by some other reviewers across the board. And many people are going to talk about them. There's going to be a lot of different conversations. It's going to be all, you know, overall, some sort of, in my mind, a chaotic process at the end of the day. But like I did mention in my last video, the best thing you can do is to filter through the BS and just focus on what you feel is more important in terms of the things you're looking to see when this game actually comes out. So here are a few things that I would be paying attention to if I was in a position where I did want to go ahead and watch reviews. Number one will be play length. How long is the game going to be? Number two will be the open world. How big is this open world? How interactive is it? What are the things and activities I can do? Number three will be mission structure, side quests, all of those things that engage the game overall. Now, we have seen game mechanics, but again, you can't necessarily see game mechanics from somebody else's experience 100%. You can watch me play a game, but not until you pick up that controller are you capable of making that decision yourself. So game feel, I would not necessarily recommend that you be looking out for that from somebody else's experience. Instead, that will probably be a thing where you can experience the most after having purchased the game, which is quite interesting as well because, you know, you're trying to make a decision on purchasing this game. But from the most part, for a lot of people, this game's purchase is a no-brainer. If you're on the fence, I think this video might be much more geared for you. And here are the complications that I've laid out for some people anyways. And for most of you, you've already made up your mind. Your decision is already solid and concrete. But anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. How do you think the review process is going to go? How do you think Hogwarts Legacy is going to be treated in the review sphere? Talk to me in the comment section and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.